we have a particle moving at according to this formula for its position and the first thing that this problem asks us to do is to find the particles velocity at a certain point in time specifically where t is equal to one second so to find the formula for velocity we'll need to take the derivative of this position function since velocity is defined as the derivative of displacement to take this derivative we'll just need to use the power rule so this 4 will disappear. Uh, the t in this negative 12 term will disappear as well. So we have negative 12. And then we apply the power rule to 3t squared. So we take the 2 and multiply it by 3. So that's 6 multiplied by t. And then the power decreases by 1, so that vanishes. So this is our formula for the velocity of the particle. The problem is specifically asking us to find the velocity at t equals 1 second. So we can put 1 second into t, like this. Doing this, we find that the velocity at 1 second is equal to negative 6 meters per second. Because this answer is negative, and since we have the negative symbol here, that means that the particle is moving negatively on the x-axis, or moving to the left, moving more negative in the negative direction. This also already answers parts b and c, because part b asks us whether the particle is moving in the positive or negative direction, and we can see it's in the negative direction, because its velocity at this point is negative. Likewise with c, c asks for the speed, and since speed is just the magnitude of velocity, so without direction considered, then the speed is just going to be 6 meters per second without the negative sign. That's the important part, since speed is a scalar while velocity is a vector. So since speed is the scalar, it doesn't take direction into account, so we can just rewrite the velocity, but without the negative sign, without anything that indicates the direction of the motion. Part D is asking us whether the speed is increasing or decreasing at that moment. You can figure this out pretty easily by either putting the velocity formula into a graphing calculator, or by just plugging in random values around the time point, t equals one second, to see what the shift is. But you have to be careful when you do this. If you put the velocity formula that we found into a graphing calculator, you'll find a graph that looks something like this. You'll notice that no matter where we are on the graph, the velocity is always increasing. However, that does not mean that the answer to the question is that the speed is increasing at that moment, because Part D is asking about speed, not velocity. Remember the important difference, because speed only focuses on the magnitude of the velocity. At the point in time that we're looking at, the velocity is still negative and still has not yet made the turn to, into a, a positive velocity. So it still is slowing down. To make this more clear, we can try putting this same velocity formula into a graphing calculator, but with a magnitude line around it. If you do that, then you end up with a graph that looks a little bit more like this. This helps us a little bit more because speed is the magnitude of velocity, and we can see much more clearly now that as the velocity approaches zero from the negative side, it, the speed is still decreasing because the speed is still slowing down in order to reach that zero point right here. So the answer to D is that the speed is decreasing at that moment. Part E asks us if there is ever an instant when the velocity is zero, which is kind of redundant with what we just pointed out, since we just pointed out that there is a point. It's right here at the point when the velocity formula, or the velocity graph, intersects with the x-axis. We should probably find where that is, though, and we can do so by setting the velocity equation equal to zero. So we're setting our velocity equation equal to zero so that we can find um, where it intersects with the x-axis. So let's first get the 12, the negative 12, and the 6t both on their own sides of the equation. So adding 12 to both sides of the equation, we see that 6t is equal to 12. So then we'll just divide both sides of this equation by 6 to get t on its own. And then we find that t is equal to 2. So that means that when t is equal to 2 seconds, at the 2 second point in the time interval, that's when, uh, that's when we intersect. That's when the particle 
intersects with the x-axis. So that means that that's where the particle momentarily stops. So that's the answer to part E. Finally, part F asks us if there is a time past this point, uh, past three seconds, when the particle is moving in the negative direction of x. Now, you might, probably can already tell just from the velocity formula, just from the way this velocity formula is set up, and also from the fact that we've already calculated the only zero, the only point when it switches directions. But you can put this velocity formula back into your graphing calculator, and you can see that no matter how far you go, it never comes back a down after this point, after this two-second mark. So the answer to part F is that no, the graph, the particle never goes back to moving in the negative direction. So that is the answer to every part of this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. And if you have any requests for further videos, again, please leave a comment below or please contact me. I've got a Discord server in the description and I will do my best to help you out. Thank you and have a nice day.